So on a previous video, I talked about all the different bass string types like flat wounds, nickel round wounds, stainless steel round wounds, all the different characteristics that they have and when you would want to use each one. And then at the end of that video, I did a shootout, back-to-back -back shootout between all three different strings in many different styles. And I did that on a Schecter jazz bass. And a lot of people said that their favorite string in that shootout were the flat wounds. And they were actually my favorite too. I love how the flat wound sounded. And so now in this video, I want to do that exact same shootout, but on the Music Man Stingray Special, a very different sounding bass. And I want to see if your opinion changes, if your favorite string on the jazz bass is still your favorite sounding string on the Stingray. Because one thing we didn't talk about in that video and that I want to talk about in this video is not just the different string types, but the relationship, or I guess you could say chemistry between the string type and the bass you're gonna be putting that string on. Because a lot of people, they'll just think about string type, they'll say, oh, I'm a flat wound guy, I love playing flat wounds, or I only like playing nickel round wounds. But really, you shouldn't think of it that way. You should think about not only the string, but the bass that you're gonna be putting that string on, because that's gonna affect it greatly. I mean, there are strings that I love on a certain bass, and I hate on a different bass. And this is one of those examples, and I'm gonna expand more on that after the shootout. I want you guys to hear it first, and then tell me your opinion on what you think, if you have a favorite string on each bass, or if you have the same favorite string on both, and then I'll tell you my opinion at the end of it, and then we'll elaborate a little bit more on this combination between the string type and the bass type. So here is the shootout on both basses, all different strings. <laughs> Thank you. 
right, so hopefully you weren't just listening to that through your phone speakers because really not ideal for hearing bass and trying to hear the subtleties and characteristics that we're trying to convey here in this video. But anyway, even through a phone speaker, you can probably hear the differences. And I can tell you that finger style, flat wound on the jazz bass, I love that sound. But on the Stingray, I did not like flat wounds at all. I really would never use, well, I won't say never, but you know, I usually would not use a flat wound string on a Stingray because to me, it's just, the Stingray is known as being a very bright, very aggressive sounding bass, and the flat wounds just sound so lifeless on it. You just lose that whole brightness and aggression and that characteristic tone that the Stingray is known for. It's just not really there with the flat wounds. You know, when I think of Stingray, I think of like Lewis Johnson, like. You know, that kind of classic just Stingray sound, you know, what the Stingray is known for. And when you put flat wounds on it, it just kind of takes the life away out of it. It just doesn't sound right to me. Even with finger style, you know, even though I love it on the jazz bass, I just don't really like it on the Stingray. And so that's why I say it's very important to consider the bass you're going to be putting the strings on because, you know, the strings have different characteristics like stainless steel is a very bright sounding string. Flat wounds are a very dead sounding string. You know, no question about that. And that goes for basses as well. I mean, Stingray is a very bright, aggressive sounding bass. A P bass is a lot darker sounding because of the pickup placement. The P bass doesn't have a bridge pickup, and the closer you get to the bridge, the brighter it's gonna sound. The closer you get to the neck, the darker it's gonna sound. Even with just playing finger style, you can hear that. If you play by the bridge, it's gonna sound a lot brighter than if you play down by the neck. So, you know, I've never really seen anyone talking about this, and this isn't like a hard rule by any means. This is just my experience, what I've experienced over the years, is that you would think logically, like if I take a darker sounding string, like a flat wound, and a brighter sounding bass, like a Stingray, they would kind of balance each other out and it would sound great. But I've actually noticed that it's the opposite of that. When I take a really bright sounding bass, like a Stingray, and a really bright sounding string, like a stainless steel round round, it sounds great. That is my favorite combo on the Stingray is the stainless steel. It's a very bright sounding string and it just brings out that brightness and aggressiveness of the Stingray. Slap sounds incredible on it with it. Finger style pick, anything you do just sounds awesome when you have the stainless steel on the Stingray, in my opinion. And you know, one of the most popular combos out there, the P bass and the flat wound. You have a darker sounding bass, and a darker sounding string. And it just works great. That P bass flat wound sound is also incredible for finger style. You really can't beat it. It's an awesome sound. And even like Pino Palladino, early in his career, he was playing a fretless Stingray. And you would think for that kind of sound, he would go for a flat wound, but he actually played round wounds on that bass as well. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of point that out because when I put that last video up, I had a few people on Instagram and even on YouTube just commenting or messaging me saying that they never really considered flat wounds before, but the flat wound sounded so great in that video that they're gonna try it now. And I definitely encourage you to try different strings, but really keep that in mind that just because you find a string that you love doesn't mean that that's the ideal string for everything because it really depends on what bass you're gonna be putting that string on. You know, like I would put flat wounds on a P bass. I think that's a great combo and it sounds great if you're playing finger style. And I would not necessarily gravitate towards stainless steel round wounds for a P bass. I just don't think that's really the sound. It could be a cool sound for certain things, but that's not really a sound that you would really think of as being a great sound. But when it comes to Stingray, it's the opposite. I wouldn't really put flat wounds. I'll put stainless steel round wounds because that's really going to amplify the characteristics of the bass and it's just gonna sound great. Like the marriage between the Stingray and the stainless steel round rounds are just great. P bass and flat wounds are just great. So I encourage you to experiment with different strings on different basses and really just pay attention to how they sound. And again, not a hard rule, but in my experience, bright string, bright bass sounds awesome. Darker sounding string, darker sounding bass, sound awesome. Like I said, I've never heard anyone talking about that, so I don't know what other people's experiences are, but that's just what I've experienced. And so I hope that's helpful. I hope that helps you guys and it gives you a little bit more insight into strings, because that's something people ask me all the time, is what strings do I use? What strings do I recommend? What strings should I get? And it really just depends. It depends on the style you're playing. It depends on the bass you're playing. Both things are gonna be have a huge influence 
on which string you go for and what kind of sound you're gonna get out of the string, out of the bass, out of the amp, out of all of that. So hope that was helpful, hope that was insightful. If you like this video, leave a like here. It really helps me out with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video, thanks.